Ahead this episode, Aaron discovers Lupin the Third. Imagine having a child come out and being like, yes, I shall name this child Monkey Punch. <laughs> <laughs> Fafa tells Sony how to enforce copyright laws. You're trying to copy my work. Um, you better not do that. <laughs> um. <laughs> and a Cloverworks film makes us ask what our younger selves would think of us now. Did younger I? Kenny would look at you and say, oh, you didn't change the hair. <laughs> <laughs> It's over 9,000! Nani? Configure the language logic interface for Japanese. Kawaii-fi. 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 And welcome back. It's another normal Kawaii-fi radio episode. We have been missing for about a month as we did conventions and a whole load of other things. Yes, and we're famous now. We're, we're on the convention <laughs> circuit. I'm, I'm Kyle. Hashtag and Perth famous. The, the team's here with me. We've got Kenny. We've got Aaron. We've got Farah. Welcome, guys. I'm glad you are all around. Oh, Farfa. I forgot we've got to say Farfa now. Yeah, it's Farfa now. So Ooh, so let, we've got Kenny, Aaron, and Lady Farfa. Yes, it's Lady, Lady Farfa. Farfa. Konnichi, what's up? Right. What's up? K- Konnichi Farfa. Konnichi Farfa. <laughs> <laughs> Kawaii Farfa. We oh, like that. Oh, oh. You're pushing it, Scoop. <laughs> I really am. So we are trying a bit of a new format to the show because uh, every year we like to take feedback and have a look at what people are listening to mm-hmm. and what they're liking, what they're not. And we figured, you know, we want to give you more. We want to give you what you want. Well, if we're upgrading the format, does it make it a five mat? No. no. Damn it. No. Oh, no. Geez. That's, that, that, that's annoying. So let, let us know what you think in the comments this episode. Let us know if you enjoyed the changes, if there's anything you'd like to see happen, um, and we'll, we'll go from there. But is this where we mentioned that if you message us a bunch and like comment, there may be a Kawhi reply? There might be a quiet reply, reply on the show. New segment. I yeah. like it. So um, you might have noticed we've been a bit quiet the past week on social media. If you're one of our followers, um, we went into a COVID lockdown. Yeah. 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 That that sucks. Yeah. It For- really did For- suck. <laughs> yeah. For- fortunately, we're very, very fortunate here in, in Perth, Western Australia. Um, we've mostly survived sort of unscathed comparative to the rest of the world. We're very lucky here because our local premier, um, which would be like, well, what's the equivalent for the US? Like the local governor, the state governor? Yeah, something about like that. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, he shut down the border. Um, basically meant that, you know, if you were going to come in, you had to isolate for 14 days mm-hmm. and pass a test to get out. Um, and because of that, we've been pretty much since, I'd say, April, May last year. Um, there's been about that, yeah. There's been restrictions. There's been hard times, but we we get through it. We got through it, and it's been pretty good. But last week we had um, an, an issue where someone uh, believed to have gotten that uh, new strain ended up out UK of, strain uh, out of quarantine. So we went into a brief five day lockdown. There's been no additional cases, which is good. It's great news for all of us. Exactly, especially considering only a week before that we had Hoshi. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it could have been really rough. It could have been. Um, now we were meant to have. We we, we did a live we panel. Did. Con. Um, and it was fantastic. It was amazing. We Look, excelled, if I say so we myself. We had people up on stage. We had, uh, you know, prizes to give away. And we had a problem with the technology, uh, so we couldn't actually record it. But it was okay, because I was there. Yes. Save <laughs> <laughs> the day, Aaron. <laughs> in my All Might costume. You might have seen on social media, Aaron dressed up as All Might, and me running around in a bright red Kawhi Fi shirt, as well as Farah and yep. Kenny. Uh, Fafa and Kenny. Fafa and Kenny. Fafa. It's going to be like, Fafa, 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 Fafa. <laughs> Come on, you guys, get on it. <laughs> get on yeah, the far, far train. Took me a choo, choo, choo. took oh. me a bit to uh, get into the whole swing of Hoshikon and get mm-hmm. uh, social with people because I'm not a social person. Damn it, but Kaya, you did why do you well. keep doing this to me? You did so you did well. really well. Like yeah. I was, I was so able proud. to hand the reins over to you so many times. Mm. Like I got them warmed up, and you just went. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I work as I work well in a duo. I think. But we won. We, we won. won the quiz. You and I won that quiz. <laughs> yep. Didn't you forget, guys, that the quiz is exactly like... Whose like, lines are anyway? Yeah. Well, whose lines are anyway? Don't everything, take this victory away from me, Kyle. <laughs> everything is made up and the points literally don't Got to tell you, <laughs> I thought I had it. we wouldn't honestly have won without uh, the support of yeah, true, the people who came true. up on stage. Without the, that was fantastic. You know, the actual, without the fans. Without the the fans, fans really did help support us and carry us through a lot of yeah. things. They got a bunch of our questions right. But look, HoshiCon went really well. It did. Um, especially for a first time convention here, especially after we've, you know, had all these oh, yeah. restrictions for coronavirus over the past year. It's, it's ended up 
working really well. Everyone was really pleased with it. We were really pleased with it. It was fantastic. We got to host two panels, pretty much. We did, we did. So. And you can listen to that second panel, which was um, Lady Farfa yep. and local WA net idol Beepion. Beepion! Um, that's on our YouTube channel at the moment. Um, it's all about demystifying the world of idols and making sense of uh, the many interesting and unique terms that are used for it. It felt like being in a lecture, which was fun, but it was a fun lecture, mm. so it was the one you wanted to go to when it le- needed. lecture with interaction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And hey, if you are new to the channel, look, welcome, first of all. Um, you can find us pretty much across everything. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, um, we are going to be on Discord, tw- Discord yeah. very shortly. We're going to have our Twitch set up so you can watch our episodes as they come out as well. We're and on cassette, we're on vinyl, <laughs> we're on <CDs. laughs> and, and we're also on Braille. Very good. Also, very hi good. to the guys who visited at HoshiCon. Yes. yes. If you're new and you've been uh, and you saw us at HoshiCon and you subscribe to us because of that, and this is your first one, hi. If you've watched the backlog, well done. Yeah. Like, thank That's you for joining us. We appreciate you very much. But yeah, um, without further any ado, I think we need to talk about what we've been watching. Kawaii Fire Radio. I have no idea how old I am or where I came from. Daddy, hi up. Hey, time. I gotta go. I just. I have to know. I did that thing. What we're watching. So, Aaron. Yes, Kyle. You've been watching something. Yes. Been... <laughs> Has it been anime? <laughs> what have you been watching, Aaron? I've been watching it on loop. A, a loop <laughs> on, you may say. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> so, a, a couple of weeks ago, we managed to catch um, the, the three Kawhi guys went out and caught Lupin the Third. This first, the something that film. Zenigata hasn't managed to do. No, no, he's, he's never caught <laughs> it. Oh, 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 oh. And I, I believe because of that, you decided to jump in that back catalogue. Yes, I have gone down a very deep, deep hole. <laughs> um, it started with the Netflix loop on because I was like, you know what? I'm kind of curious to see if this has anything to do with the movie. It doesn't. Still kind of fun to watch anyway huh. if you want mm-hmm. something like live action, but like kind of fun to watch. Hmm. Um, but then I got into Lupin the third, the fourth season because that's uh, on Anime Lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that was very interesting. Like the way they started off with Lupin getting married. Yeah, like I, <laughs> it's it's very str- a very strange way for it to start. Yeah. So um, for people who have not been inducted into this, uh, Lupin the third is about like the gentleman thief. Yes, he is based off the original French um, Arsène Lupin. Arsène Lupin character, and he's meant to be his grandson. Yeah, he's ah. the third Lupin. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Farrah, you haven't caught Lupin before, have you? No. Sorry, it's far, far. um. It'll take a bit. You know what? It's going to take a little while to get used to the Fafa thing, but we'll get there. 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 It's uh, yeah, Lupin the Third has been going f- for forever. Ages. Yeah, like one of its like original movies was made by Hayao Miyazaki before yeah. he made oh, wow. Studio Ghibli. Castle, Castle mm-hmm. of Cagliostro, well before great. Um, uh, Studio Ghibli was established, and before mm-hmm. he out- started, you know, assembling that team. That's incredible. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, the, the main criticism Monkey Punch, the creator of Lupin the Third, had was that, but Lupin's an ass. <laughs> you've made him nice. He's not nice. Yeah, you've turned him into a gentleman thief rather than just an absolute cad that he's supposed to be. Mm. But yeah, what, what did you think? Oh man, I loved it. Like, uh, it, the way it's all set out and then, like, it, with every sort of... Because it does have that heisty kind of show mm. feel to it because mm-hmm. it, it is about a gentle... Well, I wouldn't call him a gentleman thief, but a thief. He's a thief. Who's very quirky and clever about how he goes and he's got that good team dynamic with Jigen and Goemon and um, what's her face? Fujiko Mine. Fujiko, Fujiko Mine. Mine. I knew you'd know what's her name. Her face? <laughs> what's her face? The the one important female recurring character in the yeah, series, aside uh, from his wife. I was going to say, you mean Rebecca, his wife? Yeah. The name I do remember? <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Rebecca, uh, the rich girl who wants to be a thief. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Um, and it's basically their team dynamic as they go to steal rare and valuable objects and... You know, it never quite goes right, but they always kind of get there in the end. And then mm. they got Zenigata, the inspector from Interpol. Always chasing them down. Always yeah. chasing them down. Like, that's a serious question, though. Is Interpol even a thing anymore? Because that's it's short for international police, and I don't think that exists anymore. Well, like James Bond and stuff. Yeah. I feel like I it, feel it does. does exist. We just yeah. don't know it. Because, uh, I mean, Interpol... Uh, well, James Bond wasn't Interpol. No, he, he was, was MI6. MI6. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in fact, he would team up with Interpol in a few of the old yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. But we, we don't really hear that very often anymore. Actually, me and Kenny were talking before, and we are like, you know what would be really cool to see? 
Tintin cross with Lupin. Yes. 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 See, oh, here's the thing, though. Would you have them teaming up or, you know, butting heads uh, going uh, against each other? I would have them other? teaming up, to be uh, honest. I think you'd have them teaming up because Tintin's always trying to rescue mm. something. So it could be that he enlists Lupin to help him steal something that's been taken by people who plan to destroy or they Oh, I like both, that. Or they're both mm. on the case and they just sort of meet partway and go, all right, let's meet up. Let's yeah. uh, let's yeah. crew up together. Or it could be like in the uh, CG movie w- we watched where they mm. go to that arche- archaeological site. Mm. And so Tintin could be like, oh, hey, I've seen this great thing. And Lupin's already there, like, trying to crack into it. And then yeah. they... Yeah, bit of a, could, but you know, with that French it. influence, you know, with um, Lupin being the French. Yeah, because Lupin's based off Fr- uh, France, Tintin's based off Brussels and yeah, Belgium. Yeah, there you go. Though, and Sprouts. Mm. Though <laughs> Lupin's main thing is that he's always more around Italy. That's where a lot of well, more no, of his no, stuff no, is based. No, no, no. That was just the fourth season. That's just the fourth season. Oh, no so way. They did that as a hat tap, like a, a, a cap tip. What is it? You know when you like tip, hat tip of the tipping hat. your tip hat. hat. They tip their hat to Italy there because Italy is one of the biggest fans of the Lupin franchise. Oh. So much so that they actually aired Lupin the Third Part Four in Italy a year before it went to Japan. Which oh, is wow, nuts! And the uh, I believe the it was they still had the Japanese dub, but the Italian dub was ready to go at launch. That's Ooh. amazing. So That's it's good. huge. You will see Lupin merchandise all over Italy. It's crazy. It makes We've sense. spoken about Lupin on the show before. We have. We did We did do, I think it was like episode five, actually. Yeah. Um, uh... We did like a, because uh, Monkey Punch passed away a few years ago when we were just first starting this. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. We're just like, oh, wow. Well, we have to talk about His it. name's Monkey Punch? It's a pen name. No one yeah. knows his oh, true name. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. We do know his true name, but we're just going to call him Monkey Punch. Oh, it's because like me that... being Fafa. Yeah, exactly. And Kenny being Kenny. I am Kenny. Imagine having a child come out and being like, yes, I shall name this child Monkey Punch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, on, on the note of insane things, Konosuba. Konosuba. Now, uh, if anyone from our prior episodes isn't aware of God's blessing on this wonderful world, um, as it's known, Konosuba. <laughs> I thought you were just giving it a lot of praise. <laughs> no, I just love Konosuba. <laughs> well, look, I, I rewatched it with my partner over the week in lockdown, and I'd never watched the dub. What a great show to watch during lockdown, yeah, actually. Yeah, because she, she hadn't seen it before either. And the dub's really good. The dub very it's good. really good. Which um, is a rare and welcome surprise. Well, I mean, I think the only gripe I have is Union's voice, and that's because I feel it's a little too high-pitched, mm. but that's because I've been pre-exposed to the Japanese dub first, yeah. whereas she possible. found it fine. So I think it's probably, if you're coming from the Japanese dub to the English dub, you might notice it, but otherwise. Yeah. Mm, Konosuba, again, for people who haven't caught up with this one, is basically the big send up of all your isekai transformation yeah. and other world animes. It is the animes. Asik- isekai satire series you've all wanted. Yeah, it's great. Aqua mm. is like one of my favorite characters as <laughs> Megamoon. So it's oh, like you know, oh, Aqua. God, she Aqua. is useless the useless goddess. goddess, the useless goddess. But like, there's so many funny scenes with her in it, and oh, it's I just know. oh yeah, it's just so relatable as well. And uh, it's just it's like just, oh. every time I think of Aqua, I go back to the bit with they've stuck her in a cage and thrown her into a lake. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking like, as well. Okay, start purifying the water. <laughs> also, uh, Kyle, yeah. I think the problem you may be having is it does take a little while to warm up to the Soviet Union. <laughs> what? <laughs> you with the jokes tonight. Oh, oh, I'm on it, man. man. No. Um, but look, um, <laughs> that, can was, highly, that was terrible, man. I can highly recommend checking out the dub. They've got season one, God. two, and the film all mm. dubbed, and they're all on Crunchyroll now. So oh, it's definitely worth checking they're out. They're fantastic. Do yourselves a favor. Subscription. Or, like, I don't think you even need, really need a subscription. Well, no, with the dub, you will definitely need a subscription. You'll need a subscription yeah. for the dub. Oh, but oh. the dub, um, well, Crunchyroll just hit, I think it was like 4 million, 10 million subscribed members or something, something like that. Something Something nuts. Nice. Um, they, they've done really well. Um, but that does bring us on to something from this season. Oh, and yeah. you, me and Fafar have been watching it yep. because I got her name right this time. Hey, you did. It was really well applied. I caught the first two episodes of this. We are talking about... In your time, in this great time of pain, could I interest you in an egg? <laughs> it's one direct priority. <laughs> Daddy DeVito, how'd you get in here? <laughs> I'm the trash man. Of course, he's too short for us all to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So it's it's one direct priority. He's got a million of it them. It is probably one of the most talked out talked about series this year. Absolutely, like everyone, all the media, all the anime media for actually mm. are talking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's everywhere. It's it's all over everywhere. Twitter. It's all over um, TikTok as well. Every it's, anime fan wow. I've seen that is like really into it has a little egg next to their name on their Twitter profile. Oh. <laughs> That's how much everyone loves. Okay, this there's gonna show. there's a Kawaii Fi egg going up on the Kawaii Fi Twitter. Oh, it has to. I mean, it's Tama because God. Tama God. it really <laughs> is just unlike everything we've seen it, before. Yeah, and yet there's so many little 
familiarities, you could say. The, the first episode for me was really bizarre yeah. because it was like, what am I watching? Like I had abs- like I was like, okay, okay. It kind of just shoved you into it. But when you get such a bizarre adventure, to episode three. Mm. Whew. Oh, everything really starts is, making sense. Everything makes sense at that point. I oh. mean, just... that kind of is, you know, that's standard issue for anime. It's at episode three that they do something big to mm. hook you in. See, I mean, the, the thing that's setting Wonder Egg apart this season, mm. uh, not only is it an original yeah. anime series, animation's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Soundtrack is perfectly balanced. It never overpowers the show. Um, and I mentioned this when we first saw the, the work of, you know, the first artwork for the show. But I love the character design. They feel familiar without being cookie cutter. I like that you can connect to these characters as well. Like there's mm. these four girls and now we're introduced to all four girls yeah. at this point. So it, I, I, I can't speak highly of it. It's just one of those shows you just have to watch. I love the fact that it is original because it's just yeah. so, I mean, there's points where I was like, this reminds me of Flip Flappers, this reminds me of this show, but it's just so different and I'm like questioning mm. it. All the time. I was going to say that the uh, kind of crazy mixed up Wonderland that they find themselves in, it kind of feels like Persona to me. Am I wrong there? Well, the world is kind of Persona-ish, especially with yeah. those, what are the enemies called? Oh, See no evils? See, See no, no evils, evils yes. Yeah. Um, and then the weapons feel very kill a kill. True. Yeah. So that was something I was going to say. I love that um, our Aoi's weapon is basically a multicolor pen turned into a mace it's beautiful mm-hmm. it's great it's great and one of the other the other, the other girls do have weapons that are stationary based it's um, got a very alice in wonderland feel to it monogatari yeah um i was thinking va- that. vampires are stationary <laughs> I, was, I wasn't thinking that it's more there's aspects of the real and of their mm. personality turned into something big and powerful and that's the interesting thing dream. with the show is that com- like it's mixing between the real world and this whatever yeah. this world is and it's slowly becoming like, I, I think the other thing that i wasn't expecting is that the story elements in it now i mean first and foremost a lot of trigger warnings here oh, this yeah. discusses oh, yeah. a lot of mature content so this Very isn't mature. for the kids i'd say ma15 yeah this one goes into things like bullying self-harm Probably it's, it's heavy higher. stuff we, it's heavy stuff yeah but what I like about it is that it has elements of real drama and t- real drama and trauma mm. without it feeling melodramatic. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because like we're, we're often seeing these shows and you just go after a while you're just like oh god just just stop. You know, this is too mm. much, but this actually feels grounded. Like mm-hmm. the, I, I feel like the people who are involved in writing this have experienced some I think so. of, of yeah. th- this thing or un- or know someone who has and they've it's, interviewed it. It's going into the subject but as a form of escapism to it as well. Yeah. And how to yeah. overcome it as well. Indeed, indeed. Mm. I think, yeah, this was on Anime Lab, wasn't it? It is on Anime, yeah, anime Lab. Yeah. Um, and I was sitting there going, which, which, service am, which services aren't I subscribed to at the moment? No, it's, <laughs> it's probably going to be an anime contender for Anime of the Year. I think it will be. Mm-hmm. It, won't, it won't win Crunchyroll's Anime of the Year. Uh, no, Crunchyroll obviously original. not. Well, um, maybe it would because of how hyped the show is. Yeah, it could do. I think there's a dub on the way as well. I saw something about a dub, but wow, we're already? not too sure on the quality. What, well, there are like yeah. up to six episodes now? Four, how are they, four. How that, are they that, already getting a dub? No, no, that's, that's, that's pretty standard. standard for Funimation that's standard. now. Yeah. And we'll be actually announcing a lot of dubs this week coming yeah. in. Oh, this okay, week, okay. Like we've already had Hori Mia's uh, dub. Um, we've now had Skate the Skate Infinite, the Infinite Attack, on Titan. Attack on Titan and of course Wonder Egg Priority announced. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, only downfall I find of Wonder Egg, that OP is not catchy. It's not. Uh, it's, it's really it's lackluster. It's not. Yeah. The, the EDs best point is it still art you know i think that's a reason why though carl because i think they want you to feel like oh it's so depressing and dark and then it lights up by the end it's yeah. that it's that tone like you know it does do a tonal it's dark and then it goes kind of light towards the end mm. and that's it each episode has kind of gone with that whole that yeah. whole thing but look i mean th- these are great shows but the reason we wanted to talk about wonder egg is it actually connects to our topic for today mm-hmm. because wonder egg priority is a Cloverworks original series. Mm-hmm. Cloverworks is an animation studio in Japan. Who would have thought? <gasps> I know. Who would have thought? Japanese animation and on this podcast? Who would have thought? <laughs> who would have thought? <laughs> oh. So that means that we need to do this. Kawaii Fire Radio. I didn't know they did that. I love their art style. Oh my God, they made that. Studio in focus. Yes, it's time to do Studio in Focus and it's Cloverworks. Yay. Yay. Which, you know... Live works do good stuff. They are a recent studio, but uh, well, well they're, they're, sort of. Yes and no. See, this this no. is the interesting thing. Cloverworks is owned by A One Pictures, yeah. technically, 
It was A1 Pictures Koenji Studio. And in 2018, that was rebranded as Cloverworks. So it's still, it's now considered a studio just like A1 Pictures underneath Sony Entertainment Japan. It's kind of like that weird mitosis of studios where mm. one will split off for the other one, but they're still semi connected, I guess. Well, they've decided they wanted to have a unique brand identity that distinguishes it from A1's main studio. Mm. And I can understand that. Like, if you have a look at Cloverworks, like, no offense to A1 Pictures, but Cloverworks <laughs> is one step up. Yeah, definitely. I like, think I think it's their A team basically. Yeah, which is A one team. I was going to say oh, you'd yeah. think that would be the A one studios, but well, isn't A one a steak sauce? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it is A one steak sauce. So uh, they stopped doing steak and then they started doing animations, and then the the animation team decided they like clovers more and working with them. So they A one A one grade animation. You with the jokes today, man? Are you pushing for like a solo stand up? I think yeah. he wants a comedy show. Yeah, I'd love a comedy show. Just like <laughs> uh, just an hour of me just riffing, and then that's it. Never hear from me you again. Doing puns and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but look, um, CloverWorks has been behind a lot of big animes over the past two three years um and some actually were originally a1 pictures ones and then they were changed into cloverworks during production yeah they were uh, rebranded later on because um, it was done by that studio i think the ones that were rebranded were uh darling and franks yep. persona 5 um ace, ace attorney ace attorney 2 and slow start i don't think i remember i haven't slow watched start. slow start but slow start actually was rebranded after its original run ended mm. and darling the franks they made that change just before it went to air that's right because yeah. it was a co-production with Trigger as well. Yeah, and mm. so it says you know, in association with Trigger and A1, A1. Pictures. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but it's yeah, the weird politics of inter-studio kind of connectivity is how do they get stuff done like that? Well, kind of what they do is they um, say, oh, we want, you know, you guys are in charge of the main production and mm. you let us know what you need us to cover. So if you have a look like, I mean, we've mentioned this a few times before where it's like, you know, this is the main studio that's heading it and they're looking after the main design, the main story, the flow, the storyboarding and all that. I guess, I and guess. then they say, okay, we might get Kyoto Animation to do our backgrounds only. And Kyoto will provide a load of those steel backgrounds as a quick monetary turnaround. Mm. And they can go, okay, um, we don't have anyone to do, what was it, second stop animation, I think it was, uh. which is basically like the fill-in panels between the main stuff to make things move smoothly. Right, right. Okay, we'll outsource that to this studio. We'll give them the original documents so they can work off them to fill in those blanks. Okay. Um, so a lot of studios work together. Yeah, see, like with Darling the Franks, so most of the action scenes and those real big moments were done by Trigger. Ah, uh, mm. I get you. Actually, that... That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, Trigger's so, great for those. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So they knew what, you know, how to use Trigger. Yeah, it's almost a year later and my eyes are still kind of melted from promo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and that, man, that's that where they beautiful. went, I'm going to Makoto Shinkai and do everything. Mm. <laughs> but look, um, Cloverworks actually has produced a lot of our favourite series over the yeah. past two and a half years. Oh, easily. Oh, some Most great mine. names. Oh, there's, there's some great ones. I mean, we can, obviously everyone talks about Darling in the Franks, but... We know I'm a soft boy and I like my romance. Mm -hmm. yes. So Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Love Senpai. It. Which I've been sleeping on and mm -hmm. I know I must watch it. I hear good things. Yeah, I mean, that's beautiful. They did the film for it as well. Yes. Uh, obviously, when they do films, a lot of companies come together to work on it, but they were still the core team behind it. Mm -hmm. They did um, Fairy Tale. They did Fairy Tale, the like, final season. That's yeah. like a... Big, uh, that's a, like a big name shown in production. Though. It does because I, I mean, admittedly, Fairy Tale was originally in A One's wheelhouse. Yeah, the first two, uh, first two story arcs, if you will, the big seasons. And then it went to somewhere else, didn't it? No, no, that it went to um, Cloverworks, the final season. Oh, yeah. okay, mm. okay, okay. So it, it's interesting that they decided that Cloverworks would be the right group for it because, not no offense to Fairy Tale, but it, it, you think mm. like these sort of shonen style shows tend to stay with the big studios for their whole run yeah. because they're yeah. weekly they need that high high staff count they need the regular turnover so they can swap people around and go okay yeah, yeah. You've, you've done with that project quick bring you in here to help yeah mind you we've seen with mapper um with attack on titan and stuff like that as well yeah but i mean attack on titan at least has a set run true time. true like true, true. they go okay there's going to be 16 episodes or 12 or 24 whatever it might be mm. yeah. and they go okay we can plan around that we can allocate the stuff when you're doing an ongoing series like you know naruto or or One Piece, or yeah, any of the big ones, really. You need to have so much spare staff and capacity in the company. And Global yeah. Works last check, I think, only has 80 employees. Plus wow, changing that's... animation teams. Like, yeah. that's... Uh... It takes a lot to just kind of go, oh, we can't do that anymore. We're going with these guys. Like, especially if you're doing mm. those weekly episodes. Yeah, mm. I mean, Cloverworks isn't one of those companies like, you know, A1 has its own building. 
Cloverworks has an office in a building with Whoa. other studios. Seriously? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it, it says a lot about, you know, the ability for a company to handle something like that. I mean, animators, as we know, are already pre- paid uh, like yeah. a pretty oh. slim. I'd picking, like to so. think that they w- would be getting paid a bit more, though, being under the Sony umbrella and stuff mm, like that. Uh, yeah. to, to be honest, actually, Sony's probably one of the worst Yikes. for underpaying Yikes. staff. A1 yeah. Pictures in particular has had a lot of trouble. Which I wonder if we should cover that focus. whole issue as a sort of a segment some other time. We'll, we will come back yeah. to it. Yeah. I th- to be honest, because of the nature of it, we can't really do it due to our desire to be PG rated. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's um, m- maybe like a Kawhi Fi extra or something like that. Sounds good to um, me. But then that brings me to something I know you watched, Aaron, because you're a big fan of it, and that's Fate Grand Order of the Potato in Absolute the Baking Babylonia, with wasn't Babylonia. It? Yeah. Uh, Fate Grand Order, Apophrica of the Apocalypse. I can't remember. This, this, nice if tongue it's, twister. If it's more than 10 words, your name's too long. <laughs> oh, come it's fine. I no, it, it's worth it. No, it's not. 10 is pushing. It. Look, <laughs> if you can acronize that to Fate Go, the series, that's literally four words. I mean, is it wrong to pick up? Is How it is wrong fate to pick up go girls four and, words? Ah. Fate Go, the series. That's, oh, what, the that's series. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. like, hang on, I'm missing something. I got like two words. Here. I, I, know, I know, like, what, what's the mobile game called? Fa- fate, fate Grand, Grand Order. Order. Um, I think at the moment it's like Lost in, uh, wait, no, Abyss in the Lost Belt or something. So what, they keep changing the end of it. Well, how do you keep So there's the main story, which is just Fate Grand Order. And then the Lost Belt is like bonus stuff on top of it, where they sort of go to like alternate realities. I remember the name. Fate Grand Order, Absolute Demonic Battlefront. (sighs) Babylonia. Babylonia. Bravo. Yep. Because me and Kenny took the utter mickey out of it when it was announced. Sorry. Could you people have just put numbers on these things? <laughs> no, because it's an actual story arc in the game. <laughs> yeah. That is called Absolute Demonic Front How Babylonia. How many storylines are there? Oh, I think that is a bad right? question. We will we will be doing a fake go, uh, fate demystifying episode this year. Ooh. So that, that's that's happening. Can I get a um, whiteboard for it? You'll need multiple. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, horror. But that, was a, that, that brings us to Millionaire Detective. Oh, yeah. Um, which we, we talked about a lot last year. Yeah, it was a fun little rump uh, I mean, last like, season, look, last I mean, year? it yeah. wasn't for everyone, but production-wise oh, and yeah. quality-wise, mm, pretty schmick. I, I can d- summarize it in three words. Sure. Mentally stable Batman. <laughs> I that disagree. Is, that is still quite a jump. It is. I don't, I don't think Dice Guy is mentally stable. He's more <laughs> mentally stable than Bruce Wayne. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> well, but is it like yeah, more, in a room. more stable Batman? I th- okay, more I think stable it's, Batman. I think it's different forms of insanity. Yeah. Uh, Daisuke is more a kind of a dissociative psychopathy. Yeah, Bruce uh, Wayne is more PTSD. Mm. Yeah, a bit, a bit of everything, really. That well, first like episode, though, was so good, oh, though. So good. I kind of want to do an entire Wi Fi extra where we just psychoanalyze. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just like do character <laughs> comparisons between like the millionaire detective and Batman and just like break them down entirely on an extra? <laughs> so, could we call it the Wi Fi sessions? Yes. Like, <laughs> My goodness. Psychoanalyze a character. How does Quite that make sesh. you feel? <laughs> <laughs> One of us has to play the character. Ooh, guess, uh, guess Aaron's it. Yep. Um, <laughs> yes. Speaking <laughs> speaking of massive issues and PTSD. Another one by Cloverworks, which we've quite loved, mm. is um, Promised Neverland. Yeah. Second season, ah. present run. Now, we, we won't talk about the, uh, the <laughs> issues. No, 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 no. <laughs> sus. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, we won't talk about the ongoing issues with the second season. If you're watching it, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. We're going to wait and see how this pans out. If you're watching it and you're a manga reader, you'll definitely know what you're talking Which about. Which is me. Um, and yeah. as soon as I heard, I went, oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah, I got to uh, see that reaction. That was beautiful. Yeah, I was happy yeah. to see that too. I, I think I said it earlier, it's um, first season, Promise oh. Neverland, second season, Promise Neverland. It's like the difference between Last Airbender, Legend of Korra, honestly. It, if, if they were a continuous timeline together. Exactly. In a, yeah. yes. and, and that that's kind of a problem because, to my understanding, they have cut out a lot of important content, including something called the Goldie Pond arc from this second season of Promise Neverland. And that is kind of a core critical part which explains the world they are actually living in. Now, to be fair... To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. I feel like what they're going to do with that is make it into a movie or an OVA. But here's the thing. And while that's great, mm-hmm. that should have happened before. before. So it should have been yeah. they released the Promised Neverland film called Goldie Pond, sto- the, the story of Goldie Pond, and then introduced season two. Yeah. Because... What happens at the end of season one connects directly to the Goldie Pond arc. The, 
Oh. It literally, they go from there. The thing that happens in the first two episodes happens, and then it's the Goldie. And Pond this is story. where my confusion oh, okay. was. Remember, I was saying like, mm-hmm. so um, they, they've skipped a big chunk of important stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, hmm. And that's immensely concerning because what they have jumped to from memory is around chapter one hundred and fifteen. Uh, or that's 125. A big jump. It's a big chunk. There's, Hell of a jump. That, to put that in perspective, the original series kind of covers chapter 1 to 35. Well, okay, um, okay. You've skipped two seasons to get to where you are. And that, are they just trying to wrap it up quickly? Well, that's my concern because I don't want them to wrap up Promised Netherland this season. It deserves four seasons. I or feel, five. I feel like the best possible thing about this is that people are going to be confused enough by this to want to go and check out the manga. But that's the thing. They shouldn't have to. Exactly, This, this yeah. is something you and I have said many times about productions, both for anime and for films. Yeah, if yeah. you have to read source material to understand it, you've missed the purpose of producing that content. Yeah. That's a very good if you point. need extra stuff, if you need homework to get it, then you've missed the mark. Yeah, and that, that's 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 difficult. And I look, I'm, I'm intrigued to know who at... Cloverworks is in charge of this because we want names. I want names. And I'd like names, please. I wonder if this is a matter of uh, Corona. I don't. Um. I don't think so because they've got the content there. Like that, that. This is the best thing about having a manga because you literally have the storyboard the ready story, to go. Yeah. Like you've got the story. You've got literally a storyboard to know what angles you should, sh- you know, shoot, if you will, of the characters, how to create them. They've the had plenty you of need. time to work on it as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yes. I'm. I got to say, I'm still very much enjoying um, Promise of the Land season two, but mm. but um, it's I, lacking. Well, something. I was going to yeah. say, like previously, Studio um, Cloverworks has only done a maximum of two shows a season. They have three this season and that makes me wonder if they brought someone new in I think I read something about this six months ago about saying expanding their team or something we'll have to uh, check on that yeah um, but I wonder if this new person they've brought in is like you know the director of look it doesn't surprise me if they have done that just purely with what's been going on with Sony and stuff like that Mm -hmm. like you know the takeovers of certain companies yeah yeah. into studio politicking is yeah yeah, tiresome it's it's very tiresome Um, but look I mean Outside of what's going on, I mean, this current season, Cloverworks Ooh, yeah. have got Horimiya, which is other than other than um, Wonder Egg Priority, probably the biggest show. This I season. love it it's so much. It's so wholesome. Mm-hmm. Like when I was told the story, it's just like, oh, these are two people who have very very different kind of personas outside of their school life. Mm. Mm-hmm. It's um, like your main boy is this tattooed, pierced up, punk rocking looking guy, gorgeous, mm-hmm. and. The uh, mother's deep dark secret is that she's a wonderful sister who takes care of her little bro and kind the of mother's six. No way. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you've got Miyamura who is looks in, in school. He looks like he's a moody, dark, yeah. saddened guy. Um, he looks, looks like, like he, he would be an otaku. He'd be an otaku. Yeah. He, 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 he is not an otaku. He's the reason not. he's got his hair long and droopy is to cover his piercings. The reason he always wears baggy clothes is to cover his tattoos. Mm. Um, then you've got um, Hori, who um, she appears like the p- popular girl at school, but she then immediately goes home to look after her little brother as her parents are at work. Yeah, yeah I think that's my confusion, is that she does her hair up and uh, she dresses... She looks like a mum. She looks like a mum. She's she very does. homely. She is. But like like I said at HoshiCon, mm. uh, get you a guy who can do both. Get you a girl mm. who can do both. Yes. That's the thing because, about it, is mm. that... When I first heard the story, I was thinking, oh, okay, so this is going to be a story where the central plot is them keeping this sort of thing a secret. They don't. Kind of no. It's just... See, that that's one of the major changes from the manga. So I've been reading the manga for about 18 months, mm. um, and Coco, one of our former presenters, introduced me to it, um, and she highly recommended it. And the first... Like so, in episode two, where um, people start to learn about what's going on, mm. that's like chapter forty. Wow, really? Wow. Like, oh, it's, okay. It's it's kind of well, maybe not forty, maybe twenty. Um, but it's 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 pretty much the equivalent of a season. How well, curious, yeah, because it feels like such a natural progression in the anime it does. story. It's yeah. and that's the thing, the anime. Like we've we've discussed this before about like you know sometimes film and TV series adapted from the book work better if certain things are left out or things yes. are added. Fair um, enough, and fair in this case, I think pacing wise, because this was one of my concerns the pacing of the manga is awful Ooh. like i love the manga to bits but not a lot happens um and it takes quite a lot while for something to happen yeah. um they've included all the important bits oh, i love that. in the series 
they've gotten rid of a lot of the filler and focused on the interactions and the artwork for it is phenomenal. Yo, it's yes. like, so shiny. The, yeah. And w- so between Wonder Egg and this, like... Mwah. Today is egg. Today is egg. <laughs> and, Today is football. <laughs> <laughs> and it continues. Uh, next season, they have one coming called Shadow's House. Oh, yeah. So this, is that a supernatural one? Uh, it, it would appear to be. It's uh, that a s- group of living doll maids attend to the needs of their ghostly... Like black has black outlined Ooh, uh, masters. Uh, the maids are basically there to clean up the soot that these like oh, wow. otherworldly That's spectres very leave behind. For works, so it, it is based on a manga. The manga is complete. It's six tanker bonds right now. It's okay. called, um, faceless shadow nobles living in a vast mansion, attended to by living dolls who spend much of their time cleaning up the soot endlessly emitted by their mysterious exactly, masters. Exactly. Exactly. Was that the title or description? That's the the synopsis. (laughs) Oh, okay. Um, (laughs) Fate has absolutely (laughs) spoiled it. No, this is not Fate Grand Order of the Suit Place Country. Um, Fate Grand Order of the Mysterious Maids Cleaning Up Half the Spectres. It focuses on a young and cheerful living doll as she learns her duties, serving as the attendant for Kate Shadow Sama. So nothing to do with Shadow the Hedgehog? No. Oh, Um, man. Look, this isn't Back Arrow 2.0. Come on. (laughs) Back Arrow. Back (laughs) Arrow. So, yeah, that is coming this April. This, this April as well. Um, There's a lot coming in April. Art so. style looks gorgeous. It looks like such a detailed kind of a set I for I think it. that's what I like about Cloverworks is the art is just stunning. Mm. No matter what show it is, you're yeah. going to love it. Like Darling the Frags, I don't care what people say. The art was magnificent. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they nailed it straight away. They did. Um, Hori Mia is just Utterly, utterly beautiful. So, be, so shiny. I, I would literally, I could spend an entire episode going through how perfect that adaptation is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I, obviously we are only four episodes in. We will have to see what happens in the coming weeks. Mm. But based on everything so far, yeah. I have a lot of hope. You know, it's one anime this season. I just get so excited. Apart from Wonder Egg. About when but Wonder Egg but drops, Mia, gone, mm-hmm. those two, there's those two Cloverworks shows that have actually just been like, I need to watch them. I don't care about anything else. I must yeah. watch these two shows. And that's saying a lot because Eurocamp's on this season. I love Eurocamp mm-hmm. and I'm more excited for these two. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Eurocamp is, it's kind of been more of the same, except with a couple of action scenes. Yeah. <laughs> action, you say. Yes. Driving. But that's what I mean. Like, even Dr. Stone, which is my baby. Yeah, I know. I haven't even touched it yet. So, and that's, wow. That's, that's, that's <laughs> like... I've watched half of the first episode and then one direct dropped and I went... <laughs> yeah, and that, you know, and that's... I mean, I feel like we're being, like, it's almost we're being a bit flippant with these when we're just saying, oh, we just have to try these other things. But no, we're, these are, like, very really, compelling pieces like of they, work. These will, these will be nominees in our anime at the rate they're going, like, at the end of the year. They're that good. Wow. But we have talked enough about Cloverworks, and we will come back to it in a moment. But first, we're, we're going to do a little bit something different instead of how we used to do the anime news. Uh-huh. The headlines are gone, but the chat isn't. Wi-Fi Radio. Tonight on Anime Communicate. Great story. Compelling and rich. Nothing brings ratings up like a little controversy. Yes, it's Anime Communique, our new anime news section, where we talk about what's been happening over the past few weeks in the world of anime. Um, Sir, it's come to the wireless, I'd say. It's (laughs) It's come to the wireless. It's on the wireless. Um, We need to talk about something kind of important for a lot of our listeners. It's to do with cosplay. Cosplay law, in fact. So Ah. the Japanese government is investigating whether income earned from cosplay is actually a copyright infringement. I... Now, didn't I say this like to like literally you an did. episode? We did. Ago, we, we spoke about this. Yeah, I literally said this. I. It feels so iffy to me. It does. It does. So look, here's the thing. Um, they're basic. No, nothing has been drafted. Nothing has been written up. They've set up a body to look at whether or not people creating cosplay uh, characters and selling it for income earned from that activity is considered a breach of the copyright holder's IP. Yeah. And I under- look, as frustrating as it is, I also understand where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. I do too. But is that selling of cosplay items or is that selling yourself cosplaying? That's what they're trying to figure out. Yeah. Okay. So it's mm. this is kind of a wide wide reaching sort of discussion that they're doing they're talking to rights holders they're talking to cosplayers they're talking to cosplay retailers um my understanding is at the moment their main focus is on cosplayers selling 
basically the equivalent of an idol checkie of mm. themselves. Pictures of themselves in the mm. cosplay. Um, it's a, a, essentially, what, what have we got here? Seeking opinions from both copyright holders and cosplayers, such as Anarcho, but there is no proposed legislation yet. Currently, any cosplayer who can earn income from cosplaying through such members, methods as subscriptions or membership services, so that would be like Patreon, OnlyFans, only fans, and so yep, on, yep. Compensation for appearance at events such as conventions mm. or selling the costumes that they have made are being looked at. They need to qu- yeah, look into whether that's violation. Uh, as much as I hate to say it, they've got a point. They do have a and point. And if I you're making money for yourself by ripping off a character... Taking well, someone I mean, else's intellectual property. Exactly. And, and that, that's the thing, isn't it? It's the question between whether you're ripping it off, such as what we see with, like, uh, do you remember knockoff DVDs and stuff? Yeah. And yeah. Like that? The oh, barley wow. bootlegs. Or whether it's, yeah, or whether <laughs> it's considered, um, oh, you know, so, homage? Support, an homage yeah. or support. But if the they're industry. making money off it, if they're making, I feel like that's the thing. Uh, are they going to have to ask for, like, permission? Are they going to have to, like, check with the see, studio involved? that's the involved? thing, because, like, it's cosplay the... is you know, a representation of how much you love a character and stuff. And that's what it should be. But then, you know, in recent years, people are making bank oh, just no from kidding. buying photos of certain cosplayers in the, in their outfits. Their outfits. <laughs> Not naming names. Not na- no, I won't <laughs> name names, you see. But that's what even draws people to the conventions is because these people cosplay these certain characters. Well, a, a prime example was at HoshiCon. The, one of the main events at the end of the second day was the cosplay comp. comp. Mm. And, you know... It was fantastic to see all the effort people had put into yeah. this. And I also appreciate that if you've put in this much effort, sometimes weeks, months of preparation yeah. to create something, you want to reimburse yourself somehow through it. Yeah. But, but where is that line? Yeah. Because we've, we've gotten to a point where people who are using, um, you know, social media and YouTube and all TikTok. that, to, TikTok, to promote their content through, you know, but basically through gated communities, like you know, you've got to have a membership or you've mm-hmm. got to purchase it. The question is, where is that line? Where are they earning too much? Is there? Can you define too much? Um, mm. that, that's the problem because, as it currently stands, if you're one of the biggest cosplayers in the world, you could probably earn more than most people do in a year in a month mm. easily. And I feel like this is going to cross over into the. Uh, I mean, uh, Fafa, you are our ambassador to the idol community. Yeah, is this going to have an effect there? Do you I think was I... thinking about it because, like, with Love Live, you know, you get a lot of Love Live cosplayers, mm, and course. it's everywhere. Oh, yeah. And I was thinking about this because you know, actually, you're not meant to cosplay at the lives. People still do it, oh. but you're not technically wow. allowed to actually be in full cosplay at the lives. I saw hundreds of people doing it. Yeah. But um, because obviously it's a copyright thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I feel like there's got to be plenty of idol groups which are based on those Yeah, and things. that's my concern because, yeah, we're they're using the music. They're dressing mm-hmm. up as the characters. Theoretically, Love Live, that whole sunrise could be like, hey, Laura, you're trying to copy my work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you better not do that. Oh. Um, <laughs> That's probably the politest way I've ever because, heard of a copyright strike. Yeah. <laughs> and you honestly, you that, or they're going to have to arrange some kind of like a pay share, something like that. Well, yeah. Stel Luna, for, uh, this is the thing, Hoshikon, Stel Luna performed and they yeah. performed Love Live stuff. Yeah, I yeah. recorded it, I stuck it up on YouTube. Literally, five minutes later, it was taken down. Yep, and I Ouch. had a similar issue with the video we put together for your panel, mm. where we have had it blocked in Japan because it features music from Love Live. No yep. way. Wow. Yep. Ah. Now, look, I understand where that's coming from. In our case, the only rules that allow copyright is, um, they say fair use, which fair use is literally the weakest excuse. Lantis is very strong oh. the, on that, though. The, real, the only real reasons are for purpose of criticism, discussion, Mm-mm. and I can't remember what the third one was. But Isn't surely... Parody, parody. yeah. Surely your panel was... Panel was discussion. discussion. That's we that's would then we have fine. to fight that because of YouTube's algorithms to say it is a discussion and we're not monetizing the video. So the mon- the video is now monetized and Sony's getting the money. Mm. Even though all we've done was feature 30 seconds of mm. audio to demonstrate what was done. Yeah. Wow. Even though it's a criticism, even though we're looking at the review, you know, how it's being reviewed and talking about it, Mm-mm. it's still considered a copyright breach because of the current algorithms they're using. That's And the onus is now on the person who is alleged to have breached the copyright to prove their innocence. There is no innocent until proven guilty in the world of copyright, and that's the problem. That's foul. Yeah, and that that's the concern a lot of people have about what could happen with this cosplay situation. Yeah, uh. and that's what I mean. Like, that's why probably we are seeing the whole idol thing has just become just themselves and, you know... and. They- that's why people are buying their checkies. That's why people mm-hmm. are buying their merch and stuff. And I'm happy to support that way. Mm-hmm. 
I do have that concern with the whole cosplay thing because really, if you are making money from photos and you know mm. selling merch as yourself in that cosplay, you are basically taking someone's property and or are you i mean you're sort of basing yourself on it but surely they're buying it for the person and the uh, idol itself well, yeah, Very yeah. well here's a prime example covers of songs they yep. still require have a legal requirement to get approval from the original rights holder right. before you're allowed to do it. That's why a lot of you know the people we love to talk to on YouTube who do covers of anime songs have to have an agent and yeah. have to get preparation and management, and management to yeah. get pr- approved for it. Oh, wow. Romy's a prime example. Oh, Ro- yes, Romy's stuff is so good, it flags every single YouTube copyright every time we play something from it. It's practically a mark of pride. It is. But you'll notice on his channels, it hasn't been copyright striked by Sony. So it's because he has management organising it, saying, we've created this, here is the example of it. And when we go and say, no, this is the video used, they go, oh, okay, no problem. Mm. But it's because, once again, it's literally the same issue. Instead of it being music, instead of it being artwork, it's costume. Mm. And it's frustrating. And we're going to leave it there until we hear more on it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about something positive. Yeah. Let's talk about the fact that Nana, the TV anime, is coming to digital with a full HD release. I literally flipped out when I heard this news. And I remember as soon as I saw it, I was shaking because Mm. Nana is one of the most important animes and stories of my my 20s. Your your, your weeb life? Yeah, my weeb life. (laughs) Because it spoke to me on such a level. And it still mm. does. It's my only show. Well, actually, I have a few shows, but this is one of the shows I have to do a yearly rewatch. Oh. Yeah. I so managed it's... to get the DVDs off eBay. That's how hard it was to get mm. these um, DVDs. Um, I think I'm a little in the dark on this one. Could you remind me which one is Nana? Tell me the story. So it's basically about two girls who meet up on a train. Very different. Um, one's, you know, a rock star you know, indie rock star. One is just a general go to college. I want to just, you know, be... The, that girl. Mm-hmm. I'm um, getting a bit of vibes of um, so you, Carol and Tuesday. From yeah, this? except that both girls share the name Nana. Nana. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And that's where the connection lies. And that's the connection. They have nothing in common. Nothing. But they end up meeting again and they become housemates and things like that. And their lives intertwine in the fact that it's it's very complicated, but it's this beautiful. Mm-hmm. They become best friends through all their life happenings and stuff like that. It it spoke to a lot of women in my age group mm. of like just the situations, you know, it, talk, it goes into romance, it goes into like drama, you know, all those, yeah. it wasn't really a slice of life. It was drama. It, it, was, it was pure, pure, it's pure drama, drama between, you know, two people sharing, you know, a connection and then dealing with their dramas in their life. Wholesome drama. But it was the music. The music mm. is un. Believable. Well, because one of the girls is the frontman of a neo punk rock band. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's pretty cool. But it's one of those shows that, yeah, like I said, it just spoke to me on so many mm. levels. It spoke to a lot of girls. And it, it's one of those ones I do recommend that if you are in your 20s or if you want to know more about yourself, you go and watch Nana. The fact that Sentai has picked this up is mm. just. So th- this Remarkable. Is, this really this came out in 2006. It was only released in wow. standard definition, so yep. 480 or 5, 526 or whatever it was, um, 520. Sorry, um, Viz Media previously had the release yes. details for DVD. Viz, yeah. Viz, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're still around. Yeah, they're yeah, still they're around. Just owned by other people. Yeah, I just I know um, so much Netflix of their work. Netflix and Hulu have previously had streaming rights for the series, but only for 12 month periods. That's it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's been very hard to get hold of, and so many people connected with it. It was huge. I, um, I begged the day that, you know, like Anime Lab or something like that, even Crunchyroll would get this mm. this show. It, here's the thing, two live action films as well. Yes. So it's, it says a lot for a show. Great. The live actions weren't as great as the manga yeah. or the, because um, actually the anime never finished with the manga. Mm. So the manga just kept going. Mm. Whereas the anime, unfortunately, did stop at that point. But mm. um, it is, oh God. Even yeah, the I dub. Think a lot of a lot of fans of a lot of shows. I'm pretty that sure pain. back then, I don't know if it was an, uh, New York dub or it was because back then Viz did a lot of New York dubs mm. but it also did a lot of Canadian dubs so ah. I'm wondering if that was the Canadian dub that it had or the New York one I have to go and check that myself yeah. again but I wouldn't be surprised if Sentai does 
do a re-release dub on this one and get... S- I mean, they could do. They, they, they could have do kind it. of done that on a couple of shows. I mean, they if they're have. doing a full new series... I would, I would like well, to well, see it's, it. It's not. It's just they're getting the original content original. and it's being rescanned in as HD. Aha, uh-huh, right. So, right. yeah. Um, the It's going to be released through digital outlets, so that'll probably end high up dive. on High Dive. Um, and it's later going to go to home video as well, so Blu-rays oh, and so, so excited. on. So mm. it's going to be pretty good. Um, now, we need to talk about giant robots... And monsters. When do we Hello. not? <laughs> Aaron's like, Hello. Aaron's like, this is my jam. Um, <laughs> Someone say giant robots. We <laughs> dig giant robots. <laughs> God, I love that show. Okay, gentlemen. Um, Pacific... XLR makers, come on. XLR makers. Was great. I don't think I ever caught that. It was the guy who owned a car which turned into a robot. What? Yeah. Like the monster truck? I yeah. don't know this show. It was like a Cartoon Network-y yeah. type thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll, show you, I'll show you afterwards. So um, good. So Pacific Rim The Black. Now this is a Netflix uh, CG anime series set in the Pacific Rim universe. Um, mm. And all of Australia has been taken over by the kaiju. Now Woo-hoo! I have that so fits. many questions because wait, all of Australia loses... We're not even on the Pacific here in WA. So we are as far away from the Pacific as you can pretty much get on Australia. Don't you know, Kyle? It's Kaiju Migrate. <laughs> well, everything in Australia is already out to get us, so Kaiju wouldn't really yeah. make much of a difference. So I don't yeah. see how they could take <laughs> it's over. It's like the Kaiju would invade and we kind of wouldn't even notice because it's just like, ah, it's just an I mean, ordinary look, Tuesday. Look the, well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually really want that. Oh, Jay, it's getting the Jager. We've got to go and fight something. We're going out near Uluru. It's going to be great. What, it's Mad Max Jager, now. It's oh. Mad Max. Mad Max. It's a bit Mad Max, actually. Um, it does look like the whole series is set in Australia. Okay. Um, it, I think potentially... Not the, New Zealand? No. 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 That's no. a sequel. No. No. Oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bro. Actually, well, uh, Pacific Rim the Black is set in Australia, so Pacific Rim the Black Fern is... Uh, oh, the, the Charles! Sil- the oh. Silver Fern. Oh. Oh. Kyle. Nice. <laughs> Pacific Rim the Silver Fern is set in New do Zealand. You, do you and Aaron just want to do a double Comedy act. duo? Uh, we're, just, just, we're going to call it Dad Attack. It's going to be terrible. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> look, um, I'll take my leave right now. Then, so, right? The, look, Pacific uh, Rim we the don't Black have any trees, though. does look <laughs> good. I'm not going to I'm not going to respond to that. It does look good, but it doesn't look great. And this is very this, this is <laughs> Kyle, oh, can you react? Hurts. I wish you guys could have seen that. Oh, oh, it's gold. It's, it's, we would have lost our PG rating then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Pacific Rim the Black looks really good. Doesn't look great. It yeah. looks very similar to a lot of Netflix's <laughs> CG animes. It does look a lot like um, uh, It ne- doesn't look as bad as... Uh, Exarm, <laughs> but yeah, Exarm is now the low bar. Everything just has <laughs> to be better than bar. that. And they pass. Can ever go lower than yeah. that. <laughs> okay, so you know, Exarm and Gibiar taste like the, it's the dueling devils. <laughs> okay, so I think we need to go back to this for a second. Would you like to know what the most offensive part of Exarm's advertising? Go was? on. Was that they said that they were quote declaring war on all uh, sci-fi animes? Yes. Yes. Before oh, the they were declaring yeah. war on Ghosts in the Shell, which is what they're knocking off. They were declaring so they war shot themselves in the on foot. Gundam, yeah. oh. or in the arm, or the X arm. It's gone. Yeah, the, so. <laughs> they used to have one. They so, shot it. <laughs> um, you know, they were throwing down the gauntlet, and their gauntlet was a sad, blistered rubber glove. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> Super Grim the Black lands on Netflix in March. Art style wise, very similar to Knights of Sidonia. That's yeah, sort yeah. of CG. And sorry, Ruby and Ruby. Yep. Oh, and Argent Demi Human. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's a bit more refined than Argent Demi Human. It's uh, Netflix is always going to be a bit typical m- Netflix. mixed yeah. bag yeah. when it comes to their animation it could be and good. stuff like that. Spider Kaiju. It could be awful. There are Spider Kaiju. <laughs> so, but see, I love Pacific Rim the first movie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, right. thought, I mean, obviously, it was kind of like a rip-off of Neon Genesis, but oh, yeah. it was like, you know... Uh, well, a- it's it's more of a knockoff of Godzilla and Gundam. Yeah. You reckon? I, I, yeah. Re- I reckon that's probably where uh, it came from. And the fact that they had that kind of like rockabilly guy in the uh, thing, it felt like it was an homage to basically all of the kind of the giant robot anime it, You know what? Ever. It's probably the best homage to that type of anime, the mecha anime. Yeah. yeah. Well, if they had have told me it was set on Mars and like it was a human colony and then all of a sudden these giant monsters were a coming to the colony. center of the Earth, I would, Gundam. I would totally yeah. be down for that. I'd be like, yeah, that makes total sense. But they're like, no, it's on Earth. These guys just discovered a warhole. What year is yeah. it set in? Oh, 
2020? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Actually, it all makes sense. That all makes sense. I, I think it And uh, the be. sequel was, it was all right. Yeah, I okay. wasn't a big fan. The best part it. of it was Scrapper and he had like no airtime. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. F- all right. Pacific Rim is set in the, the near future of 2025. <gasps> oh. It's coming. Folks. It's coming. No, but no, the no, thing no, is, no, is that no, when no, the no, <laughs> <laughs> One of the top Google searches does Pacific Rim take place in 2020? <laughs> <laughs> top question. In 2020, the kaiju hadn't emerged yet. <laughs> it's. But- Oh, that note, when did but Neon Genesis happen? It. Like the original one. What year was that? Oh, oh the Neon Genesis were ha- meant to happen at the turn of the century. Was it? T- so the second impact happens at 2000. Oh, um, it was, it was 2099. Was it? So if the second impact is 2000, is How the first impact 1000? How old was 1, Shinji? Uh, no, I thought first, it was first later impact than that. is um, 95. Isn't it? No, no. So first impact was the dinosaurs. Oh, well, actually, no. Technically, it's not even the dinosaurs. First impact was technically, uh, I guess you could say, the moon precursor collided with Earth, and that's when the two eggs, the two geofronts, if you will, of humanity and the angels both end up on the planet because it's only meant to be one. I just, oh. I just love this as a concept now. How everyone's going to be looking at every disaster movie and disaster anime, and going. Did that take place in 2020? <laughs> <laughs> no, the real disaster that happened in 2020 was Cyberpunk 2077. Oof. Oh, oh, gut punch. Please don't remind me. <laughs> All right, so second impact occurred in Antarctica, August 15, 2000. So, yep. In and then the series, no the series is so 2013 defined. because all the kids are 13, 14. Ah, okay. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, because apparently that's the age that you need to be. Well, 21 years later, here we are. Yeah, see, pre- first impact occurred in prehistoric times when the Black Moon, a giant spherical object, collided with Earth in what is now the Hakone region of Japan. The collision caused an explosion that lost a massive amount of material from Earth in orbit. The debris eventually coalesced into the moon. See, that sounds like Sailor Moon as well. They had that similar thing mm-hmm. with the Crystal Tokyo thing as well. I need to look up when okay. that was meant to be. Oh my God, so they're in the same universe. No. no. Sailor Black Moon, moon and right? Neon Genesis. Yeah, Could so, you imagine? Th- so, this so is- Pacific Rim, the Black? Hey. Oh, we segued this oh, back. Oh, yeah, we see? Did, we did All three back. in the same universe. No, well, no. Pacific uh, Rim even. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> so Pacific Rim, they emerge in 2013, and then it's kind of set like 10, 15 years after. They kind of are a bit loosey-goosey on those dates. Okay, and so we, cinematic th- universe. Th- they need to get more specific Rim. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, um, <laughs> no, <it's a> <laughs> All right, now on the note of they giant, giant you. creatures, let's talk about Attack on Titan. So this week... Briefly, for I think it ended up being about 14 hours, Attack on Titan Season 4 beat Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Whoa. on score on my anime list. What? Yes. Now, it was only by 0.01 of a point at the peak, I think. Mm. It's because something absolutely major happened in I mean, a recent episode. They started playing That's Beyblades. Why. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we've seen that. So there, there is a picture else. that Aaron uh, shared with the team, which is um, two of the characters looking down into a bowl, which is when they're actually looking out of a window, I think. Or something no, like no, that. no. It's a spoiler. It's a, spo- it's a redacted. Oh. oh, it's a redacted. Okay. Um, well, the, the, it suggests there's a bowl. And uh, I t- it took me four looks at this picture over four days to realise that they were throwing Beyblades into this bowl. I was like... Mm. You were staring at it on your laptop and it's not until I come here in person and show it on my phone, which is like it was a tenth of the size was, of the screen. It was a 30 second reaction. It was just, <laughs> oh my God, that's Beyblade. <laughs> it's but, all coming together. So right now as of recording, we are on uh, Saturday the 6th of February. Fullmetal Alchemist is currently sitting on a 9.2 on my anime list. Mm. Attack on Titan Season 4 is on a 9.18. Now, I love Attack on Titan, but it is, it's unfair to base a season of a show Agreed. as the best show of all time comparative to an entire series. Yes, Ooh, but I mean, in saying that, though, it was groundbreak- groundbreaking, groundbreaking for what it was. Yeah. And then season three happened in two parts. And season three, for me, was unreal. Like, so, absolutely unreal. So do we have the mal ratings for what they are at the moment? Well, here's the thing. The original first season of Attack on Titan is on an 8.4. Mm. It's not Ooh. even in the top 10. 
So can we do what they did on the YouTube Rewind and got everyone to downvote, but instead of downvoting, can we upvote Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? Can we just get, like, everybody in on that? Vote for 10. <laughs> well, I mean, so, look, here, here's the thing. Like, the only way to get an accurate rating of a show mm. is for people who didn't like it to also vote. Yep. And, yeah. And that, that's the challenge here. Secondary seasons and tertiary seasons and so on. I mean, you have a look at any show. Mm. The second season is always rated higher than the first season because the people who dropped it in the first season aren't going to rate the second season no yeah yeah that's and, fair. and that that's the challenge here like saying oh attack on titan season four is the best rated anime of all, all time yeah it is but you haven't had anyone who actually dropped it rate it that's true mm. the fact that full metal alchemist brotherhood is on a 9.2 and it was one season and it was well it was yeah 53 episodes mm. or something like that and all the people who dropped it also rated it and it's still a 9.2 I mean, you could make the argument that it is a remake. Mm. Okay, yeah, so I think this is going to make a lot of arguments. Look, I mean, look you could make Comment the argument. Below. <laughs> you could make an argument that it is a remake. But if we're going to have a look at that, I mean, Full Metal Alchemist, the first one, had to wrap up the story because the manga wasn't there, and therefore yeah. it wasn't an accurate representation of the story. The original series, Full Metal Alchemist, is on a nine point one. Brotherhood is on a nine point two. They're still good. They're still excellent. It's it's you could say that point one bonus is because more people who watched the original and loved it went and voted for it. Yeah. Um if you're gonna talk about the original Attack on Titan, that's rated at hundred and fourteenth in the list. Ooh. It's yeah, not even go. in the top one hundred. Wow. So I the do... fact that season four and season three part two, mm. which is literally you know, that that in particular is kind of a cop out. Yeah. Only those twelve episodes are great, but the part one of season three is not even in the top one hundred. I do feel it's a bit of a the TikTok culture as well because the younger mm. generations have just taken this and blown it out of proportion as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wouldn't say it's been blown out of proportion. No, but if but you I see think... on TikTok and social medias and stuff, it's always the um, the sixteen year olds. I don't want to call you guys out, but well, look, it, it, is, it is it is a younger generation, yeah. and I think this. Uh, I think in particular, where Full Metal Alchemist was definitely our generate well, yeah. one of the kickers for our generation, yeah. I think Attack on Titan, the fact that it's coming to an end, is a kicker for That's their generation. That's what it is too, yeah. And don't be wrong, I'm not saying it's not a good show. It is an amazing show. No. They yeah, do so fantastically. I think you might be onto something here. I think it's a sort of like, Full Metal Alchemist was our big milestone, our generation's thing, mm -hmm. and this is the milestone for the next one. Well, I mean, I'm old, so my, my thing was Cowboy Bebop. That was my generation's <laughs> uh, big yes. Cowboy yeah. B-Boy. Yeah. But in saying that, though, like a lot of people who never knew about anime actually got onto Attack on Titan because it was showing on SBS, or in Australia, that is. Yeah, yeah. And, mm. you know, people who don't normally watch anime were watching this show. And I think uh, I uh, asked this question before about, like, whether it's the setting which made it more accessible. Mm. I need to redact that. The manga of Full Metal and Alchemist is on a 9.1. The original series is on an 8.17. Oh, oh. There we go. Anything above an 8 is still good. Yeah. And that's with all over half a million uh, votes, so almost 700,000 votes. Yeah, I remember uh, trying to do the deep dive to find like what the lowest rating thing on my anime list was, like to see it for myself. Oh, yeah. And it took me just ages to get through the, anything rated around the 7s. It took me yeah. hours. Well, for, for perspective, Attack on Titan first season is on 8.48. It's been rated by 1.6 million users. Wow. So it's not like it's just like, oh, okay, you know, a couple of things here, there. It'll be fine. But, I mean, let, let's quickly pull up season four and see who actually, what that's actually been rated. Because oh, yeah? while that's on that 9.2 at the moment, I'd be willing to bet that the amount of people who voted for it is substantially lower than the first season. Yeah, true. And, you know, of course it's going to have less. So it's only got 236,000 votes. Wow. So that's... That's substantially that's, less. That's substantially less. Hmm. So It is on the Toonami block as well, so they mm -hmm. will be getting a lot of viewers this is from true. that. Um, that's not to say other shows... Yeah. Yeah. And to, to be fair as well, Toonami does heavily promote Attack on Titan. They it do. It's one of their yeah. draw cards to get people Anime to Lab as to well. cable over in America. Mm-hmm. Well, so. Can we just get, like, a real quick Jaegers versus Titans and then, like, three-dimensional moving gear versus Kaiju? It's like, <laughs> real quick, just swap. Oh. <laughs> well, okay, Kaiju are radioactive, so 3D move maneuvering gear against Kaiju doesn't work. That's a okay. very and good point. And 3D maneuvering gear against Jaegers... They're going to need lightsabers. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Jaegers versus Titans would be a pretty even match. Mm. <laughs> It'd I be a slaughter um, fest that I would sign up for. I would, I would watch that. <laughs> um, but yes, that 
I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the coming weeks now that it's kind of dropped back a bit. And as more people go to vote and as we get closer to the end, people will change their vote as well. That's yeah. true. Ooh. So. Remember how there was that uh, jump fighting game? How you'd have Ichigo versus Naruto and Jump stuff all like stars. Jump yeah. all yeah, stars. Which is still going. Yeah. And now I want just... Giant, on mon- giant monster attack on, stars. attack on Titan, Kaiju Pacific all Rim, Evangelion. Oh my goodness. And Gundam. Yes. And Godzilla. Bring, bring on the Gumpler fans. Mm. Get Godzilla in there. Godzilla, King Kong. Godzilla. Mecha, <laughs> well, Mecha what, All Stars. Mecha All Stars. She's nailed it. Kaiju cool. versus Mecha All Stars. Someone mm. out there must hear this. Get onto it <laughs> now. <laughs> DCL, versus let's SMK. go. Okay, we do need to get <laughs> onto the next segment to talk more about Cloverworks, but that's been the anime communique for this episode. There on time, there's 20 minutes of ads. Cinema Club. It's a bit harsh, isn't it? Yeah, 20 minutes harsh. of ads. I mean, it's not inaccurate. Oh, um, it's just about Every movie that. that we go to, 20 yeah. minutes of ads. Yeah. yeah. Well, even, even when we went to saw Lupin, there was almost 20 minutes of ads. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it wasn't I finished like... my popcorn at that time. Like, what are they making me do? Mm. Buy more popcorn? Yeah, probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Have you finished your popcorn during 20 minutes of ads? Here's an ad for the candy bar before we bring it to you. <laughs> Let's the main all go to the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> Chop top ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have been talking about Cloverworks this episode. And for Cinema Club, we're going to talk about a film from last year, which connected to, is well, was created by Cloverworks. It was actually created by the Super Peace Busters creative team, who we mentioned on this podcast before. <laughs> yeah, everyone starts. <laughs> crying. Um, we're talking about Her Blue Sky. It's a 2019 film. Yeah. Uh, Sora no Aoso or Shiro Hitoya or to those who know of the blueness of the sky. Now. The frog. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yep. 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 The, the frog That's... in the world does never know the vastness of the ocean, but he knows the blueness of the sky. A quote very common in the film. Yes. Ah. Mm-hmm. So Varys just like, wow, together. that just went over my head. It actually <laughs> did. And then you just said that. I was like, Oh, that makes more sense. Oh, yeah. so you're the frog in the well. <laughs> Everything's going over your head. That's, that's just me in general, though. <laughs> that's yeah. jokes! <laughs> so, look, Her Blue Sky um, is set in Chibu. It is, Chibu. Um, yeah, the Chibu Free Fresh, yeah. oh, I yeah. actually was wondering when I was watching this if this was based on a real location. Yeah. And, I ha- like, if it was not, I'd be very much surprised because, my God. Yeah, it's beautiful, The art it? for yeah. this Everything sorry, sorry. looks... Chichibu, Chichibu is its name. It's a city oh. in Saitama. Yeah, Chichi. There we go. Chichi. <laughs> it's, yeah, it feels very small town. Oh, I've been there. Wait, yeah. what? Yes. Because yeah. now that when you said, because I was like, hang on, wait a minute. You actually go past it through the train line and stuff like that as well. And it's beautiful. It's green. Mm. It's just... I mean, it's, it's, t- it's west of Tokyo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not actually out like, you know, Tokyo is okay, but that, it's just like a suburb kind of thing. Yeah, because yeah. 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 you know how, like, for for us in Australia and those in the US, you've got your state, which mm-hmm. is an area title. In the US, you've got, uh, sorry, in the US, the UK, you've got um, sort of like your local area, like uh, um, Shire, the Shire, well, there like, you go, Northumberland city of. or city of, and so on. Um, and in Japan, they've got their districts, districts, yeah. and this is within the uh, Saitama district, yes, um, which is kind of cool. So, look, the story. One punch? <laughs> he actually the, the irony of Saitama in One Punch not living in Saitama always irks me yeah <laughs> <laughs> so look the story is a third year high school student named Akane Aoi is dating Shinosuke Kanemura named, nicknamed Shino. Shino he's an aspiring guitarist he's friendly with his uh, with Akane's preschool sister Aoi and in turn the sisters support Shino's band now Akane and Shino plan to move to Tokyo after graduation where Shino will pursue a career in music However, the girl's parents, the girls, the girls, the parents, girls are killed in a car accident. And Akane changes her plan, choosing to stay in Chichibu to raise Aoi, who is 13 years younger than her. Mm. So that is literally the first three minutes of the film. Mm-hmm. 13 years later, Aoi is an aspiring bassist who plans to move to Tokyo after high school, while Akane works for the City Hall. Masamichi Nakamura, nicknamed Michinko, the drummer of Shino's former band, also works at the City Hall. And Machinko is planning to hold a music festival to boost the city's tourism. And the main performer is a famous anchor singer. Someone who's a musician from the town is returning. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. I wonder who. <laughs> it's me. Yes, it's uh, I. Shino returns, but he's very much more. Well, I mean, it's been 13 years yes. and it looks like city life has 
not been very kind on him. It's kind of crushed his soul and his dreams. I was about to say that. It's beaten the soul out of him. That's it. Life will do it for you. In fact, it's beaten the soul out of him so much that (laughs) (laughs) it landed back in the hometown. Kenny. (laughs) Yes. So one afternoon while practicing bass alone in the hall where Shino's band previously practiced, Aoi encounters Shino from 13 years ago. Yes, it's sort of like his uh, his younger self is present. Is he? Yeah. Is he a ghost? Is he a vision? Is has she just gone nuts? Yep. It's- well, his vision in the sense of the MCU vision, like he's got a physical form that they can touch. Mm. But it's he's kind of bound, restricted to that room. And you watch the film to understand how this all works. But this film, I adored. It's it's four people, the young and old version of Shino. Aoi, who's now older, and Akane, who is now much older, in the mm. 30s. So a lot's happened to both, to all of them. They've all gone through different things. They've all had to give up things for their careers and their ambitions. And in fact, Aoi's seeing the younger version of like this uh, well, childhood hero of her is making her sort of like look back at her own past and look back at everyone else's mm. past as well. And it kind of inspires that really, really horrifying question. If your younger self met you, would, what would they, they think? like you? Would they be very disappointed? Would oh, they be that's proud? a good question, actually. Yeah. It's you a like horrible you question. In the movie, because I sat there and I was like, "Oh, what would younger Aaron say?" Oh. I think younger Kyle would be happy, to be honest. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah, uh, younger like, Fafa would be very happy with how she's yeah. turned out. Yeah. I think, I think younger Kenny would be happy with where you've ended up. Younger Kenny would look at you and say, oh, you didn't change the hair. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a cartoon character. The, you keep the, the same higher hair the forever. hair, the closer to godhood. <laughs> hey, mate, okay, I guess I'm Satan then. <laughs> mate, this, oh, no. <laughs> this isn't even product or anything. This is natural. This is so natural. <laughs> you have no idea how long I had to hold my head out the car to get my head to stand like this. <laughs> Aaron, would you, young Aaron be happy with that? Uh, modern young Aaron, Aaron was so such a hippie, he'd be like, "You sold out, man. What's <laughs> up with you? You became, bu- you became part of the system. You're, you're yeah, a you're servant of a man. man. You're a Come fascist. on, so, yeah, young Kyle would be disappointed. I didn't become a rock star. So <laughs> true, actually. I mean, like, I mean, I, I can see like our younger selves, just like in the film. You yeah. have there would be things you'd regret you didn't achieve. In of course, like yeah. 10, 15 years time. Yeah. Like, it's actually kind of funny because they're seven, like 17, 16 in mm. this story, and that's you know a few years ago for me. If you add the the thirteen. <laughs> A few yeah. years ago. On top you of had, everything had the, else. You had the 13 years to get to 30 years old. Think, and, uh, yep. For you and I, that's a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think uh, you're both quite close to that as well. Mm-hmm. We're getting uh, there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might be closer than me, buddy. I, I, no, no, I okay, Kenny has breached that milestone, even though he doesn't realise it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I kind of stopped keeping track of uh, my age around 18. Yeah, we've got to start <laughs> carbon dating you. Carbon dating. <laughs> <laughs> cut, cut Kenny's arm just like, count the rings. Count the rings. <laughs> <laughs> so look, um, th- this is, her blue sky brings up a lot of important questions about life and how people change <laughs> and looking back at yourself. Yeah, and I absolutely adored it. Now, admittedly, as we've mentioned before, I love romance stories. Oh. I love stories which have a bit of drama related to them, where it's you know, as we said, it's not flavor. melodramatic. Yeah, but you know, it's poignant and it makes you think. And yeah, this is course. one of those films, and it is a slow burn. And that's the, that, that's I think why it didn't perform as well as it could have. It does take a bit to get into. Yeah. So I started watching it two days ago because, you know me, leaving everything to the last minute. Oh, okay. um, you want to talk last minute? Yeah. <laughs> so for me, I loved just the visuals of it. Oh. I loved the character mm. designs, everything like that. It, just, it started off beautifully. I got to that point in the middle of the movie, I was just like, I, I can't keep watching it's just mm. boring me like and I, I, I knew exactly what you meant when i got to that point yeah and i understand where you're coming from but i don't like to leave things unfinished so I then i turned back. it off and yeah. went and watched the rest of it the next day mm. <laughs> see i'm not entirely sure what that point was because i watched it at two times um, speed so it's about the 40 minute mark <laughs> yeah um, there's a lot going on. They're talking about the performance at the hall, how they're oh, going to yeah. organise. Yes. Yes. Yep, yep. And that it, was it my feels point. like there's quite a lull in the story there. Where they're talking about like the finances mm-hmm. and all yeah. of that. I okay, don't know. Yeah, 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 I, know I, was, I was actually kind of taken with that bit because there was the conflict between Aoi and uh, older Shino. Yeah. They, uh, it's like he keeps referring to them as amateurs now. He doesn't yeah. want to play in a See, band. Th- with... This was before they arrived. Mm. Oh, right, right. Yeah, before they got to that point. And that's when things start heating up, when mm. like this anchor singer arrives mm-hmm. and everything that they've spent that past 45 minutes establishing then comes to a head. Yep. So this is where I was talking to the guys before. I was like, you know what? This would have actually worked really well 
mm. as a TV series. And we talked about it. And yeah. actually, you know what? I do think they missed a mark on this one. They should have actually done this as a TV series. I think this could have been a 10 episode. Easily. I, I don't think it, it definitely couldn't do 24 episodes. Ooh. But I think if you had a 10. 12 epi- maybe. No, no. I think 10. Oh, 10 I think solid. 10. So do what Kono Subar did. You've got just enough content. Don't stretch it. Mm. Perfect. Yeah. I think ooh, structuring it, you'd need to move a few things around. If I was doing it, um, the reveal of Shino's uh, other's, other's His half. His younger self. I think that would have to come at the end of episode one. Yeah, it would. Definitely. And then they'd have to do a flashback. We, we weren't too sure on that to begin with. And mm. The more I think about it, I think the way you... If you were to structure this film as a series, mm. Shino's um, younger self appearing in the rehearsal hall yeah. would happen at the end of episode one, mm. but he'd be in shadow... Mm. And he'd be looking at the photo of them as a group. Oh, and yes. then the next episode with the flashback <laughs> explaining their connection. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. The that way you say teaser. that, my brain instantly sets it up as sort of like a thriller horror suspense. <laughs> this I is not be... another. <laughs> There's a murderer in the rehearsal hall. But see, no, that no, no, makes no, no, more no, no, sense no, no, no. because <laughs> then you, you know, you're getting a short burst of it and it's just like, I want to watch more. I want to watch more. There has to be more to Who's it. Who's the shadow? I get you. I get yeah. you. Yeah. Because then, you know, episode two would be the flashback. Of course. And it would end with him picking up. The episode would end with him picking up and Aoi walking into the hall and going, huh? Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, admittedly, that's different from what happens in the film. Um, but if you str- like, when you structure things for TV and film, it's always different. I mean, that kind of raises the question. Uh, like, what series and movies are better as series and movies and better well, as series and movies? Well, I would say this one would definitely work better as a series. I, I think it would be- for pacing-wise, it would definitely work better mm. as a series. Like, I, it would, I mean... It is an original as well. So oh, yeah, yeah. That, that works well into it. They could have added more of But, I mean, stuff. that brings the question. What else could you turn into a series? Because I, I have a controversial one to put to you. Go for it. Princess Mononoke as a series. That could be interesting. I, I would watch that. Mm. Especially if Ghibli animated it. Oh, well. I would... mean, because Ghibli don't normally do stu- uh, series. They normally do feature films. Yeah, Wouldn't that be great if they did a series, though? Oh, or really. if it couldn't be Studio Ghibli, who do you, who do you reckon Mappa? I was going to say Mappa, I think, would handle it quite yeah. well. Or the guys who did... Um, Dororo, because it wasn't Mappa. Oh, it was yes. someone who it was Twin Engine and someone else. Mm. Um, I, I, I only TMS, know that Twin Engine were, t- were that. Yeah, because ev- everyone recognizes Twin Engine but doesn't realize who they are. Any episode which starts with a load of motorcycles running into the distance and then another studio name comes up, that's Twin Engine. It's just that they're partnered with Mappa or with Studios or TMS Witch, or someone else. Which, that was it, yes. Oh, with Studios could be good. Mm. I think they were the ones who did Dororo, right? Actually. Yeah, they did do Dororo. To it, to it? I think. So for <laughs> me, I love Trigger. So mm-hmm. Trigger Studios is one of my like babies and I love watching everything. And I loved my um Little Witch Academia and I loved mm. the TV series. Oh. The movies I've been trying to push Kyle into watching Little Witch sorry, Academia. It, it's sorry, uh, just back on uh Mappa. Uh, mm. sorry, Dororo. It was Mappa and Tezka Productions ah. and because Dororo was originally a Tezka story. That's right. There so, you go. Uh, Kyle sorry. does this every time I try to bring up Little Witch Academia, he distracts. <laughs> <laughs> hey look, another topic. It looks it's, it's too cute, Little Witch Academia. See, okay, with Little Witch Academia it had the two movies and you you needed the series, but I reckon if we had that series as a movie, mm. mwah, perfect. Ooh. Um now in saying that though, I would like to see Killer Kill as a movie. Oh, yeah. You could cut out so much. Hell yeah. You could get rid of so much filler and silliness. I mean, don't be wrong. The silliness is part of the charm. Oh, of course. But if you're making a feature film, you've only got two hours to work with. I would you could love really that. streamline that story. Yeah. Well, what if you made it two movies? Oh. Yeah, that would work. That would work. Yeah. Because well. yeah, yeah. I could uh, see that. And Trigger yeah, would put everything into it. Yeah. Like, everything. Oh, they would. I mean, well, we saw Promare. Mm. So. <laughs> well, it'd be like the Good and Lagan movies. Yeah. Where they oh, slip in yes. little extra bits and then they cut out like the... I, the I love They cut stuff. the fat, essentially, yeah. 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 I love this as sort of like a an idea, a game you can play. It's just like, what what established movie would be good as a series and what series would be good as well, a movie? Comment below. Sailor Moon is doing that at the moment. Yeah, because oh, yeah. they're doing the Dark Moon arc as two films instead oh, okay. of a series. Because yes. that's, that's as a series, when they originally did, not did work. it, it was terrible. Absolutely wow. terrible. It didn't work. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to be quite interesting to see how it I think it would be out. better as a movie as opposed to a series. So mm. I'm looking forward to the movie. Well, a, a prime example, we don't really talk about it because it's quite adult orientated, but Maiden Abyss, mm. um, Yikes. quite a brutal series. And having read the manga and being up to date on the manga, I can let you know, Dawn of the Deep Soul, the film, works better as a film than it would have as a series. Well, that makes it, sense. It Is really that getting a series though? Oh, I already had a series. So we had season one. They've had film one and two to 
recap the series. Okay. Then they had a film instead of a second season. Right. And there's meant to be a third season, uh, sorry, second season coming. Okay. But that is going to be quite a way off because the manga doesn't have enough content until they finish this arc. Oh. I'm only halfway down with Maiden Abyss and I, I'm taking a it's, break. Yeah, How do you it's... know you're halfway down? The abyss goes deep. No, oh. no. I'm, mm. I'm calling it. I'm the abyss is eternal. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, like that—that's—that's that's a prime example where they've hit it correct. Um, live mm. action version of Attack on Titan, terrible. Um, <laughs> well, I need to watch I've that. Seen actually, the re- like, it's got one star on anime. They Lab. shoehorn romance into it where it wasn't required. Really? They shoehorn a romance between Eren and Mikasa. Mikasa. No. Yeah. And it's and it doesn't work. They're it's they're so zooming awkward. around around skyscrapers. They're like siblings though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They've I mean, they're made not it, related. They've but. made it look post-apocalypse, and it's it's wrong. See, I would love to see a Western version of Attack on Titan, though. <gasps> oh, I, oh, you know what? You? I'd I, love I think to we see al- it. I think we Ooh. already have. It's called Pacific Rim. True. Um, <laughs> well, I feel like <laughs> there was a big wall around the Pacific, and they were trying to stop things getting out. Yeah. Well, I feel like if there was an American version, they'd have to make the Spanish joke that Mikasa es su casa. <laughs> I thought you were going with t- Donald Trump's wall just then. Oh, yeah. There's also Dad that. jokes. You're silly me. You're silly me. But, okay. In all seriousness, I would have liked to say Burn the Witch as a proper series. Yeah. yeah Instead of them go. splitting it up into a series, yeah. Yeah, because like there was so much that I felt they could have filled in there yeah. that you're kind of like, wait, what's that? What's that? What's that? Mm. And then Tite Kubo was like, yeah, that's all I want to release. And you're like, no, wait, wait. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> Go um, back. What was that thing you were just saying? Okay, on the note of going back, back to her blue sky. So, um, we, we completely uh, skipped onto this to the, other, the discussion point, but Yeiko Ninagawa was the, is a writer and she has been doing a who. Her Blue Sky manga, which ended this week. Ah. So perfect timing, actually, for where we've torn it. Now, while this is in uh, set in Chichibu, it's actually the home of Okada from the Super Peace Busters creative I team. I love her. So yeah. Super Peace Busters, we mentioned, I think, about six or seven months ago. Um, they did Anohana. Um, we mentioned them when we did the Anohana episode. Anohana well. made me yeah, cry. Yeah, they did Toradora. Anohana, the na, anthem, na, na. Of, <laughs> <laughs> anthem of the Heart. A lull um, in the sea. And all, a lull in the sea. The, these guys have been involved in a well it's two guys and a girl and as a creative team they've been involved in a lot of things together mm-hmm. and then you have a look at everything else they've done it's and it's incredible. also really good yeah, yeah filmography is beautiful gotta say she's my absolute like in terms of like she wrote hero. um a maiden's a maiden's new savage yeah. season the oh, manga yeah. um, and maquia oh yeah and maquia the flower um, and they're both very is. like to me amazing yeah yeah like Bane's new savage season. Like I'm not brilliant. A, I'm not a girl, but that touched me. That that was beautiful. Absolutely, and the fact that Show she wrote it, ball. like the, she wrote the manga, is mm. just unreal. Mm. And yeah. you could see it, it's just translated so well. I mean, in the a, show. a lot of people will complain about the ending, and some, of course, I don't blame them. And and some of the endings of the anime mm. uh, are, are questionable, but I'm, my understanding is the ending of the manga is better. Is it really? So Ooh. apparently it's a lot more clear and a lot more resolution is oh, done. I think it was there. a case that, you know, we have to wrap it up. And Okada wasn't directly involved in the anime And production. that would have annoyed her because she likes tying things up beautifully. She does. She does. But look, um, Her Blue Sky, um, we found a copy of it on Blu-ray. Um, I can't remember where you can actually watch it online. I think it might have been on Crunchyroll last check. I, no, I, I don't think so. I had a look online when you said we were watching it because I like to do my research ahead of time. Oh, okay. And I did the anime lab, I did the crunchy roll, and it came up with nothing under. You're probably going to have best luck on eBay, probably, to watch this one. I'm going to be honest, the entire thing's on YouTube. (laughs) Yeah, I found that out on my way this morning. I was like, (laughs) oh, I want to listen to some of the music from it since I just, Mm. you know. And then I checked it out, and it's like, oh, whole movie, English subtitles. But we didn't tell you guys. (laughs) (laughs) No, we we did not. We did not. Um, to, to my knowledge, it's not available to purchase or rent in the US or the UK, according to Real Good and IMDb. Um, but it was shown in cinemas, and there is a Blu-ray out in the wild. Um, you have to get the fan subs off the on, off the internet to actually. No, we're not going hunting Blu-rays. Oh man, <laughs> dude, it's, it's a pandemic. We cannot leave the house. <laughs> what if we have our masks on? Well, yeah. <laughs> The mar- 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 and then we can go on to um, anyway, look. Um, I have my plague. Her, her blue sky. Um, as I said, um, you didn't hear it from us, but the whole thing's on YouTube right now. Um, <laughs> with with the subtitles. Um, if yeah, you do we, get are, hold we of... theoretically told you it, but only theoretically. Yeah, so we you, didn't. If you do get the if you do get the Blu-ray, um, 
so if you've got a Blu-ray player on your computer, which is what we did, you plug it in there, open it in VLC, and then add the subtitles to it, and you can yep. watch it straight away. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm sure a streaming service is going to pick this up. I'll get soon picked enough. up. It's just I think a bit of a delay issue. Well, like, you know, know. Anime Lab probably pick it up maybe later this year. Yeah, maybe later this year. But look, definitely go check it out if you can, um, especially if it's playing in your local cinemas because it because it was delayed because of COVID. Mm. Um, it's still kicking around in some cinemas. Um, we'll be right back after this. And that is the end because we've dribbled and drawled on laugh. Um, <laughs> That's what we do. We haven't seen each other in so long. Actually, I know. we lied. We saw each other last week. We did. And the oh, week before. Yeah. yeah. We've seen each other a lot lately. For lunch. We had lunch. You yeah. just and haven't heard us. She... That's the you, thing. You, you we haven't, haven't heard, heard you. Us. Yeah. And then everything changed when the COVID nation attacked. Yeah. Well, there's the that COVID too. Nation um, <laughs> thank you so much for listening and watching this episode. If you're on our YouTube channel or on any of the other services, we are sharing our video through now. Um, now, next episode. This is fun. It's Valentine's Day. <laughs> and we had a great suggestion. We want to talk about love. But we're not talking romance, Aaron. No, 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 no. No we're white boots, no husband. No, 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 no. We no, are no, talking no. romance, Aaron. You and me, bro. Oh, yeah. yeah the yeah, bromance yeah, yeah. is real. Kenny, you want in on this? No. <laughs> Too many Wait, guys. hang <laughs> on a second. Too many hey. dad jokes. A broly anime? A broly mori? Mo- I am What's broly. broly. What's concerned? Polyamory, but bros. Um, Polyamory. Um, <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> Do you, I need you, to walk out the door again now, boys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Papa. <laughs> Look, um, next episode is Valentine's Day, and we are talking about our first anime love. And we're not talking about characters. No. We're talking about the anime that went, wow, I love anime. What I made us fall romance. in love with anime. Exactly. Mm. I mean, like, a lot of us grew up in the generation of cheese TV and stuff, so our first kind of, like... The first things we saw for anime were Dragon Ball and uh, Sailor Moon and stuff, but that's... Cardcaptor Sakura. Bleach. Yeah. Bleach. Um, now These weren't the things that pulled us in. Our they, they, these piqued our interest, some of them. Others did, you know, solidify it. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll be talking all those things, and I promise I won't be talking about Neon Genesis again. <laughs> Why not? It's great. Look, Neon Genesis is my first anime love, but oh, it is not... Spoil it for anyone, But though. it is not the one that made me go, I want more. Oh, so it's your childhood crush then. Yeah. That, yeah. That's probably ah, like that girl you saw in the schoolyard yeah. and you're like, wow, she's so pretty. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Neon Genesis is my childhood crush, but the, the, the one which really solidified my love for anime, you're going to hear about next episode, mm. as, long, as you will from all of us. Yes. yes. Now, we do this every episode, but like and subscribe. Yes. Click, click the bell button if you're on you know, YouTube. If you are over on one of our streaming platforms, give us a thumbs up. Give us a share. Look, we, we, we love you guys. And, and then want... go to YouTube and like and subscribe. And comment on the videos as well. Because yeah. if we know what you guys are watching, we can make more stuff like we that. We want to do a Karai do... reply. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Same mind. But yeah, look, as, as usual, you can find us everywhere. If you are watching us on YouTube and you're new to the channel, don't forget we are also on pretty much every podcast yeah. streaming platform I can think of. We're on anything that's connected with Apple, anything that's connected with Google. We're on Spotify. We're now on Amazon as well. Oh, so wow. Amazon Echoes, you can listen to us directly through them now as well. We push so a lot the, of buttons. Alexa, well, play Kawaii Fire Radio. And it'll go, play Kawaii Wai Wai Wai. Wai 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 Wai. Have you tried to ask Google to play our show? I'm it doesn't do work. <laughs> can we go try that now? <laughs> yes, we can. Yay. Look, you've been listening to Kawaii Fire Radio. Yeah, we'll be back in two weeks' time with a whole new episode. Mm. But until then, watch the anime! anime!